talking everybody, but for a lot of people who do that, they then sort of psychologically remove themselves from accountability and responsibility because they say, you know, the guy's going to carry it. Our leader's going to carry the ball. He's going to do it. We can trust him. We know, we know, we know. And then you say, hey, wait a minute. Do you see that he's still part of the system here? Hey, this guy is running as a Republican. I mean, I know that he's already run as a libertarian in the past and he didn't endorse McCain and he got very angry with Reagan and he eventually resigned from the Republican Party at one point and so on. But right now, you know, this guy's running as a Republican, so you better think, you know, look at this. What is going on here? But a lot of people, you know, they operate under this delusion. If we can invest everything in somebody then everything's going to sure. be okay, and it never is. It never sure, is. what I did was, is I knew Ron Paul had such a great voting record and never compromised, that I was confident that he was a vehicle to educate people, so I got behind him. And then as I saw the signs with his son, and even Ron the last four or five months, I, I, I was thinking I was wrong, and then basically the dam broke. And I think everybody was noticing this. That's why I think this backlash is so big. You describe it as this trend. Are you seeing the same thing I'm seeing? I mean, this is the firestorm of firestorms. And normally I do take a pleasure in seeing corrupt politicians exposed and brought down. They're not really corrupt more than just taking a wrong turn. And it's very disgusting to watch them burn up and also know they're delusional, so they probably don't even realize it yet. But it feels good to know that I've gone the right course and haven't sold out by staying delusional. I only scraped the edge of it. But then it's, it's, it's kind of sicky sweet. You know, I, I like, like it's fulfilling to do the right thing and say what I really think. But it's also kind of sad to watch, watch the city that we hoped, you know, we could build burn. Yeah, it is sad. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And I think... That somewhere along the line, somehow, Ron and Rand got into the delusion themselves, and they thought, okay, we've got enough power behind us now, and with this power, we can actually torque and turn the screws on the system and the Republican Party in particular. But somehow they got that idea in their heads. Look at the numbers of people coming out. Look at the support, the money. Look at how our ideas are finally taking hold in a way that they've never taken hold before. I mean, that had to be extremely gratifying to Ron after all these years in the trenches to see this, the numbers of people turning out and thinking to himself, okay, maybe this is the time. Maybe we've got enough behind us here where we can walk into the room, sit at the table and say, you know what, guys, we're here, but you're going to have to listen to us now yes. because we have enough power. And they're wrong. Yeah, because they're it's a table wrong. of puppets. Ron Paul was good because he would address the puppet masters, the globalists, the mega banks, the IMF, the World Bank, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, who have publicly merged. He was addressing them. And then now he's going into the pupperarium, you know, this, this, you know, this artificial... Uh, system and believing that they can change that, uh, it is mind-blowing, mind-blowing to behold. But I think you're right. We've now, John, got to look at the fact that, hey, the fact that liberty's become so popular, that's a manifestation of all of our work and the fact that so much of what we talked about is now unfolding and just move on. And perhaps this serious throttling that Ron Paul and Rand Paul are getting will move them closer back to the straight and narrow. But again, even if they cry Mia Copa, Ron Paul, I would say, has lost that aura. He definitely has. But that Mia Copa is something that he's got to do if he thinks he's going to get back any credibility. He's going to have to say, <laughs> I was deluded. You know, basically, that's what he's going to have to say. I thought that I had enough behind me to walk into the room, sit down, and make some real changes, and I was terribly wrong. Well, his campaign people are on the news are starry-eyed about a speaking slot at the RNC that hardly no one even oh. watches now. I mean, it's delusional. Right. Oh, man. Yeah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? The only thing that could happen is that inside the convention, Ron Paul supporters decide that they're going to take it to everybody else, that, you know, this is horrendous what's happened, and therefore they're just not going 
along with the show. Well, that was my final They're point, was Ron play. Paul told them, be respectful. Cops are billy clubbing people to the hospital who are the delegates and are told, give it to Romney. And Ron Paul's like, no, you be respectful. Yeah, yeah. That's the last straw. <laughs> that is the last straw. And as far as giving a speech, you know, oh, well, okay, we'll give you 15 minutes, uh, you know, at uh, dinner hour when nobody cares and you can drone on about something or other and maybe we'll put a plank in the platform somewhere and thank you very much. Big deal. Means it's nothing. a joke. Absolutely. I mean, what is it about people, even media people, because I've been with famous people around other famous people and they get all wild around a big movie star. And uh, I was talking to one movie star and he talked about Al Gore was at his house and was just falling down for hours that he was at this movie star's house. And the, and the politicians want to be like movie stars, and it's all illusion. And the Hollywood stars know it's all illusion. Most of them that are conscious know it's a prison and are embarrassed about it. Uh, and, 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 and then I see the Ron Paul people and stuff. They're so starstruck by television and all this. And the audiences aren't even big anymore. It's these giant facades, and you see full-grown men falling to their knees for it. It's something, you know, in the human psychology that wants, has always apparently wanted to go for this, you know. It's this, you know, I encountered this as a reporter early in my career and got immunized against it very quickly. But I, I've seen it with a lot of other people in this profession, you know. Somebody says, well, you know, I got a story on CBS News or they want to interview me. Fantastic. It's like I've arrived. It's not, OK, I'll do this thing because I can make this work for the ideas that I'm trying to actually spread here and wake people up with. No, it's a starstruck thing. It's like, oh, we got a story in so and so. Oh, did you see the spread on so? -so? Oh, fantastic. Or power wow, struck. Really what about people? I've seen it with so many that finally get a little media attention and suddenly they go from being a nice person to arrogant and crazy. Uh, I'm sure you've seen that too with just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People that I thought I knew suddenly turned out to be somebody else entirely. You know, all of a sudden, it's like somebody's dream came true, and then they could become the snot-nosed idiot that they always really wanted to be. Apparently, that's what was hiding in the closet all along. If I ever get the chance to be famous, then I can just take it to everybody that I ever knew. You know, it's, it's like a revenge fantasy of some kind. I've seen that play out. I've seen all kinds of insanity from people that just get a little of that taste. Well, I know power. you went to Amherst and are a, a philosopher. You have a degree in philosophy. Philosophy. What is the, I mean, let's diagnose my psychology here. I come off as arrogant because my brain's moving quick. I'm, I'm, I'm angry. I'm aggressive. It's, it's, it's not even confidence. It's more desperation. But in the final equation, the more petty temporal power I get, because life's so quick, it's nothing, tiny planet, you know, uh, the more power I get, the smaller I feel. And the more I get concerned that I do the right thing and, and the more humble I get, Versus most people, I've noticed you're, you're humble and you, know, uh, you have uh, you know, quite a bit of attention on you. What is the difference between people who get more power and become more humble versus most people who get power and become absolutely power mad? One of the things I'll tell you is, do you have any real ideas or was that always another delusion? Because if you ever had real ideas... When you get power, you realize, okay, this is pretty good because now I have the opportunity to try to use the ideas to wake there you people go. up, which is what you've done, you see. But if you never really had any ideas that you believed in, all of a sudden you get power, and what it reflects to you in the mirror is that you really had nothing all along. There was nothing there. All there was was a desire to be famous or powerful, and now it seems like your only option is to play that out, to play out that role, to be that person. You know, I'm going to go way back here, 1973. Uh, I started investing in a couple of markets because some friends of mine made some money, and it just turned out I got into a bull market. Didn't know really what I was doing. Had no idea, but I thought I knew what I was doing. And temporarily, I say that underlined because I lost it all. I made a bunch of money, like overnight. And all of a sudden, I noticed that I was a completely different person for about three days. I was walking around like I was king of the hill.
because I had no idea how to handle it. And what I realized at the time was that I had no real commitment or conviction about anything. I thought I did, but I was absolutely wrong. This was like nine years before I even started working as a reporter. And I thought to myself, man, you're in trouble, baby. <laughs> you yeah. know, you, you suddenly got schizophrenia. You realized that you got nothing here. You better decide what you're really convinced of, regardless of whether you're poor, rich, powerful, powerless. You got to serve something. You've got to serve somebody. And I think you've really given us pure crystallized veritas here. You just condensed down in my stuttering, halting way. What I'm trying to say is that that's why I feel crushed by it crushed in an energetic way but but that oh my god i've got all these ideas i'm in love with ideas and freedom and these people are asleep and they're not really living they're following some narcissistic imaginary you know uh, grand uh, delusion i want to unlock minds not because i have the answers but because i just want people to survive and 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 thrive and move to the stars oh my god we've got the worst psychopaths running things and i feel incredibly weak and pathetic in that i'm awake and can have all these kaleidoscope ideas that are, that turn out to be validated and accurate and that as bad as i am I'm a giant compared to a bunch of other people. And then you see people you even look up to acting like children. You're like, my God, I've got to do a better job somehow transmitting info to people to lift us out of this. Because in the final equation, I look at my little nine-year-old son, but especially my little daughters, who are so innocent and sweet. I know the world they're about to be put out into. And I just feel the ancient struggle for all that is good versus all that is bad, all that is fetid. I mean, I'm ranting here, but I mean. Uh, no, I'm following you. I'm following you all the way. This is exactly right. I mean, what you're, to me, what you're saying is something that has been, you know, I've been on that road for quite some time now. All I can say is I get tremendous amount of pleasure when I see somebody wake up, it's like, wow, this is a good day, baby. You know, somebody woke up or a bunch of people woke up to see that, to feel that is a thrill to me because it's kind of like coming out of a, a nightmare, you know, or out of a dream or out of a doldrum. You, you, you launch an idea like you, I mean, story after story on InfoWars every day, man, that can wake people up. And when you see it actually happening and you, you know it's happening, it's to me, it's a tremendous thrill. It's like, wow, this is what it's all about. And conversely, when you don't see it happening or you don't feel it happening or you see people marching, following the pipe. Or you're not going or, to the full it, potential. It's like we've got the, 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 the the moment now to try to reach people and then you've got all these incredible ideas but then when you try to articulate them sure they're effective but it never has all the complexity of the thought versus trying to articulate it well I don't know what I can say about that Alex but I mean having listened to you for some time uh, I think the articulation is is not only there but it's mind-blowing at times, the way you tie things together. This relates to that, and this relates to that, because you're encyclopedic. I mean, I see what's happening on InfoWars, that you're drawing in tremendous amounts of information that would put me in the hospital on a daily basis if I had to integrate all of this, and you're connecting dots from this to that to this to that, and building the image of what is actually happening behind it all. To me, I mean, I don't know what you want, but that to me is major articulation. And I think it blows a whole lot of people away because that's what they've been waiting for. Somebody to come along and say, it's not just this, this, and this, folks. Don't you see the connections? And besides that, it's this, this, and this. I think people are getting that from you every day. Well, I appreciate that. That's I just, I, just with, I know with you and myself and others, it's the opposite of a power trip. It's more just like you know, the reality shock. And I know so many people just want to retreat into diversions, distractions, because there's something, you know, comfortable on the surface about that. But overall, those are very unhappy people because it's not rewarding.